Good morning, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you all um, joining us this morning um, for our, um, our virtual version of our Sunday morning service, our drive-in service. Right at this point, uh, uh, as usual, the, the weather's looking a little dicey for tomorrow. So uh, what the, 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 the general protocol is going to be is we will send out a phone tree by 9 o'clock and also post it on our Facebook page for Hopewell UMC and uh, where we can uh, make the announcement, make the call, whether we'll have to cancel. But anyway, I do appreciate you joining us um, wherever you are and whenever um, it might happen to be. Uh, a couple announcements. Um, what are my announcements? I guess that was my announcement, that, that we might not have church, but by the time you'll see this, it, it, it'll be um, at least by 10.30, which is our starting time for our service. So uh, um, for as far as prayer requests, uh, as far as our prayer requests, we've made a decision not to, to, um, to give full names during our prayer time because this is going out onto the... Um, onto the internet and rather um, I think just for safety and um, for privacy concerns we will just give the first name and most of you will know who I'm talking about but if you have any other um, any questions about it uh, feel free to call call me and um, I can share more details but the main thing is that God knows what we need even before the scripture says, even before we, 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 we um, say anything, he already knows and that he cares and we, we appreciate that. But I wanted to uh, send out a, another prayer request for Al. Uh, he has taken a little bit of an improvement and I was able to FaceTime with him yesterday, uh, which would be Friday because it's Saturday right now, but... But I was able to FaceTime. Of course, he can't speak um, because he's had a, a ventilator um, for, for, I guess, a couple weeks. And so he's going to have to have some uh, speech therapy and stuff. But he did smile and gave me the thumbs up. And he was with his son. So I was able to see him and he was able to see me, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But maybe that's why he smiled. But it, um, so continue to pray for Al as he's trying to, um, to work his way back from the pit of COVID-19. Uh, we got a, a, um, a, um, a prayer of praise for Dwight. Uh, as many of you um, were notified that he was going to be undergoing open heart surgery, but they, the decision was made to, to correct the problem with stents which, uh, was, and he's already had that done, and I talked to him last night, and he is home, and he was thrilled that he, they didn't have to, um, to do the, the more invasive open heart surgery. So we praise God for the work that he's done um, in Dwight. Uh, another, another prayer request is for, uh, for Tam and Bill. Uh, many of you uh, know them. And uh, Bill's had some health issues, and there's been some other uh, unspoken requests. So, but, but God knows what those needs are, and, and just please uh, lift those names, uh, Tam and Bill, and Al and Dwight. And, uh, at the, and also, yes, we want to pray uh, for Nancy. Um, and she's, she's, just, she's just had some, some tough tough uh, changes in her life, but um, one of the great matriarchs of our church, and I think you all know who Nancy, Nancy is. And uh, so let's, if you'd please join me as we open in prayer, and then we'll lift those needs up to, to the Lord, and then end as we recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can come to you in prayer Believing, Lord, that, it, that you, if we ask anything in your name, according to your will, that you hear us. And if you, we know that you hear us, we know that we have received um, the answers uh, to our, our needs and, 
and all of our concerns. Lord, but we lift up to you Al, we lift up Dwight, and Nancy, and Tam, and Bill. Lord, and, and along with those, Lord, we lift up whatever, whatever is troubling our heart, Lord, whatever those needs are, Lord, we lift them up to you as we say together the words that you taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, one of the great hymns, one of my, um, my very favorites is uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All Great is 
Heavenly Father, words cannot express, Lord. Words cannot do honor to your great faithfulness. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for opening your hand and feeding every living creature in the universe. Lord, now as we look to you for our daily bread, Lord, may we learn what it means to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. How I thank you for your message, Lord. I know you've planted it within my heart. Now I ask for your mercy and your grace and your angelic protection that your word will come through loud and clear and bring glory to, to the one to whom all glory is due, and that's to thine own precious name. For it's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that I ask, Amen. God watches. God watches. He watches over his word. And he commands us to watch. And the title of this message is, It's All About Watching. It's all about watching. In Jeremiah first chapter, and beginning with verse 11, uh, this is Jeremiah's call to the ministry. And it's, it's I'd like to, to, to begin right from the beginning of the chapter, but, but in order to, um, to, to, to make the most of our time. But you, you can go back and read it, but one of the best scriptures uh, of, for us who believe in pro-life, and that life begins in the womb at conception. It's the famous scripture where, where, where God tells Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Amen. But so he calls the young man Jeremiah, and this is what he says to him right at the beginning. In verse 11, the word of the Lord came to me saying, what do you see, Jeremiah? And I see, I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. When I read that, I, I'm like, wait a minute, I, I, I've, I, I've just passed by that. And, and I, I remember thinking, what? What's, what's up with the, the almond tree? And he said, I see the rod of an almond tree. And what he's saying, I see the branch of an almond tree. And as I began to research that, the almond tree has such great um, significance in the Bible. And, um, and you can do that on your own because I don't want to just get into that. But the almond tree... I kind of look at it as what we call our, our dogwood tree. The almond tree had um, several names, and it, it was like the, they call it the wakefulness tree, because it was the tree that, that bloomed and blossomed before any other tree. And they, 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 they always looked at it as the, the, the tree that anticipated the coming of spring. And, and the blossoms just come out, no leaves or anything. First thing comes out are these beautiful blossoms. And they say they're, they're known to be the, the, the prettiest of all the flowering trees. And um, so, but if you look back in, now this is Jeremiah the prophet. So he's way after, uh, the, you know, the giving of the law and the, the calling of the, the children of Israel through the desert, but in when God gave Moses the design of what was first was the tabernacle, where what was going to house the presence of God, and then later um, it, it became the temple of God, and that was built. But when God gave that, 
one of the one of the the furnishings that was to be in the temple in the holy place he gave the design of the lampstand now remember there was no windows in 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 the tabernacle and the tabernacle was a uh, was a tent it was a portable um, um, housing for the presence of God and so when he when when he gave the design of the lampstand it was fashioned um, out of an almond tree and it had the three it had the center um, one and it's also called the menorah I'm sure you've seen pictures of that but it, it had the one in the middle then three branches came out and then three out of the other side and it was all fashioned and designed around with almonds and the the blossoms of the almond tree and so and and that's um, the, the cups that that held the the olive oil that would burn and that was what provided the light in the tabernacle in the same way um, it provided the light in the temple of God and of course Jesus it represents Jesus who is the light of the world now this this lamp the the lampstand was placed in the holy place and they were commanded to never it never went out they they had to have the oil and it had to burn continually and that's what provided the light and the the almonds the, the that the lampstand was a continual reminder of the wake the wakeful tree the um the almond always, that tree always represented the, um, the, the watching of God, the anticipation of God. And so the priests, it, 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 it reminded them how God was watching over, over his word and over his people at all times. And they were reminded that they needed to be watchful and alert and wakeful. Um, for that and so when when, when God says that to, to Jeremiah man could you imagine God saying what do you see David he's like you're asking me and he says I see the rod of an almond tree and the Lord said you have seen well for I am watching over my word to perform it God's watchfulness we could say, well, he's always watching us. But he's, I believe that he's faithful to his word above his faithfulness to us. He, his word, he's not like us. Oh, we'll say anything. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll do this, I'll, I won't do that. But God, what God says is God commits himself to his word. And, and, and he's guaranteeing this young man that he's calling, he says, I am watching over it. That almond tree is always the first indication. He said, I am watching over my word to perform it. Um, later on, uh, when, uh, um, well, it actually was before that, but he, he called a, a young man Samuel as a little boy and I know you all know the story of that how he he called his name and the little boy that was assisting in the temple um, um, for um, Eli the priest and he kept hearing his name called and he'd run over to the priest and say yeah, yeah what'd you say and, and the priest said I didn't call you go back to bed and so he'd go lay down and he'd get called again and and um, he gives Samuel a word and it was a word of judgment on Eli and the whole people of Israel and God told me he says I'm going to say something that's going to make the ears of this pe people tingle and man it was a scorching word but God uh, there's a, a, a scripture where he says that Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fail it literally meant he let none of his words fall to the ground. And that um, we need to walk in God's words and proclaim his words and they're not going to drop to the ground. 
And that's the kind of word that I want to preach. That's the kind of word that I want to proclaim and that it, it will do its thing in the people that hear it and accept it. Um, there's a, a, a passage in Isaiah 55 and where God says that, um, he says, as surely as um, the rain and the snow come down from heaven and they don't return back and without watering the earth and bringing forth, um, bearing fruit and sprouting. And, and he says, it, um, then in verse 11 of Isaiah 55, he says, So will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the purpose for which I sent it. Man, if that isn't commitment, if that isn't um, dedication, where God's telling them, he said, just like the rain and snow come down and they don't return. Boy, that's science right there. That's that evaporation. It doesn't come back unless it first does these, um, does what it's supposed to do. And, and it, he said, so the same thing with my word, it won't come back without without um, accomplishing, was without succeeding in the purpose for which I sent it. And it's going to accomplish what God desires. God is faithful, and he watches over his word, and you can take it to the bank. And so this thing of watching, that's why I said it's all about watching. God watches over his word. Now, if we get outside of his word, we better watch out because God is faithful to his word. I think above faithful to you. He does, if I'm going to get outside of his word and start living in sin, you know, I know his grace and, and long suffering and all those things and I appreciate that. But he is, he is faithful to his word and he has to be. Because that's, that's who God is. He's true. That's why Jesus had to come and take care of our sin and intercede for us. He had to do that because, because of our waywardness. So um, that's why the, the scripture says that, that, um, that he always lives to make intercession for us. It says he's able to save us forever since he always lives to make intercession for us. Think about that. When, when Jesus died and took all this stuff, he didn't just say, well, good, it's all done, and now see ya. He laid his life down forever. He always lives. We, we can't even pray for a few minutes. But think of God in Jesus Christ interceding forever. And that's why we are able to live forever. That's why he can save us forever because he's there. When he laid down his life, he bridged that, that gap. And he doesn't, he can be counted on. He's not like us. That, oh, yeah, 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 I'll be there. And all of a sudden, then we slip out the back door. You know, we're so um, fickle in our heart. But not God. God watches over his word. He saves us forever. And now he commands us to watch, to watch. And um, we can see that watching, what does watching mean? You know, it's not just, wow, I'm looking up in the sky. I'm watching. I'm waiting for Jesus to break, break through the heavens and come back on the clouds. And so we can say, there he is. It'd be like, uh, what was the little guy's name on on uh, Fantasy Island. The plane, you know. It's not like we're, like, uh, what was his name? Toto? Tattoo. Tattoo. I know, not Toto. That, that's, that's, uh, that's the dog. But we're not like, just like Tattoo Boss. There it is. We are, we are watching. Watching means to be vigilant. It means vigilant awareness. Like a sentry. At night, we are to be watching 
just like as he is watching. And Jesus commands that, thing, that same thing. Um, and and this, the, the, this comes from Mark. This is, was when, when um, I'm, I'm sorry, not, not Mark. This is in Luke. And this is our main pa- uh, passage. And it's going to be beginning in verse 12, 35 through 48. Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. Be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so that they may immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them. Whether he comes in the second watch or even in the third and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. You too be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Peter said to Peter said, Lord, are you addressing this parable to us or to everyone else as well? And the Lord said, who then is the faithful and sensible steward whom his master will put in charge of his servants to give them their rations at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says in his heart, my master will be a long time in coming and begins to beat the slaves, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers." And that slave who knew his master's will and did not get ready or act in accord with his will will receive many lashes. But the one who did not know it and committed deeds worthy of a flogging will receive but few. From everyone who has been, from, who has been given much, much will be required, and to whom they entrusted much of him they will ask all the more. These are the words of God for the people of God. Amen. So you can see it's all about being like the people that are waiting for the master to return from the wedding so they can immediately open up. You know, they didn't have the automatic garage door openers and street lights and stuff like that. But when the, 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 the masters you know, probably the better off, well-to-do people, they come back and it's total darkness and they want somebody to open them up, open up the door. And so we were, that's, he says, be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. Folks, where's your lamp at? Oh, that's my Bible's up on, I got it up, you know, right, right, right up on that shelf with all the dust. There's something about this word, folks, and and that is my passion for as long as I'm with you to somehow convince you that this word has got to get off of these pages and into your heart. And that's that's the only thing that matters. Um, Last week, um, preaching about reality and what is your reality, this is it. This is what we have to do. We have to get it in, and we have to be on the alert and, and always being dressed in readiness. Those passages that I just read, that, I'm sorry, but it puts the smack down on the eternal security doctrine. The, the, and, I, I, and I know that we are eternally secure, but folks, you better be on the ready because he makes it clear that The one that knows the will of the master and does not do it is going to receive many lashes. 
when the other ones that did the, the deeds worthy of being punished will receive just a few. And so if you know the will of God, then you better do it. Because to much, from whom much has been um, given, they're going to require all the more. So, so you better get this word in your heart and then you better do it. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right, so now we are commanded, as, as those passages said, to be watching and waiting. And, and um, Jesus, when he was in Gethsemane, probably the, the most, I don't even think probably, I'd, I'd say without a doubt, the most troublesome hour that's ever been or hours, period of time. And he goes into the, to Gethsemane knowing what's coming, that he's going to be going to the cross. And so he takes his inner circle, the, the, the ones that were so close with him, Peter, James, and John, and he enters the, the garden. And then, um, and then he, 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 he um, tells them to, to wait and watch here. And then he goes beyond and he falls down to the ground and begins to pray. And the, the, where, where the sweat, it became blood and, and came out, out of him in the travail where he prayed, Father, if it's possible, let this word, uh, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And, and so he's watching. He knew that God's will had to be done. God watches over his word and he gave himself for it. And he, he told the other ones to watch and to pray. And so Jesus comes back to him. And in verse um, chapter 14 of Mark 37 and 38, it says, And he came and he found them sleeping and said this to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep watching and praying. And he, he says that you may not come into temptation. So to avoid temptation, to avoid doing the wrong things that will get us out of God's will, he says, keep watching and keep praying. And we have to, we have to be on the alert. You know, I was thinking, what, what, is there a difference between watching and praying? Because they're used, they're, they're, they're together. From, from what I can see is that they're coupled together, and yet they're different. Otherwise, he would say, well, keep watching. But keep watching and praying. But the watching is what, where we see the need. We, whether, it's, whether we're watching for God's word or we're watching, watching out for each other, watching over our own selves. And when we see it, we need to pray. Because so, so we have to, the watching sees and then the prayer, it, it entreats God because God is the eternal one. And that's, that's, where, um, that's where the secret is of this watching is. We are not watchful people. I don't know about you, but, but I can stay focused for what's, what's my attention span, Francie? Not long. Not long. I mean, I, I, I've got, um, is it attention? Yeah, ADD. Attention deficit disorder. Big time. Especially spiritually. Oh, yes, Lord, I'll do this. I'll do that. I'm a mighty man of God. And then, then, then I'm out the back door and I'm snapping and snarling at somebody that pulled out in front of me uh, on the road or whatever. But we have to be vigilant and keep watching and praying is the command. Um, uh, th there's a, a, another scripture that where, where um, we are to watch over each other and watch out for each other. Uh, in Ephesians 6.18 um, Paul writes, he says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times 
in the Spirit. Now, man, that covers it. A lot of people say, well, when's, when's the best time to pray, preacher? Do I pray in the morning? Or, you know, some people have bragged about how I say my prayers every night. Well, what are you doing for the other 23, um, 23 um, hours and, you know, 58 minutes? You just rattle off a list right before you go to bed? No, it says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Now, the saints isn't talking about those little statues, you know, St. Paul or St. Peter. All the saints, the saints means the believers. That's who the saints are. And so we are... Uh, and, and this passage comes right after he lifts the armor of God. You know, where you put on the, the helmet of salvation, the, the breastplate of righteousness, and all those other things. And then, he, then once you're all equipped, and you got the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and then he says, then he gives this, this command. Pray at all times in the Spirit, and be watching be on the alert. That's, that's that same phrase. Watch for all the saints. Folks, there's too many slipping through the cracks. They're, they're, they're dropping like flies, whether it's physically or whether it's spiritually. They're all dropping. We got to be on the alert and praying for them. We watch over. We watch over. Uh, another scripture is one that's aimed at leaders. So this one's pointed at me, and it's pointed at each other. Anybody that's in leadership, and this could just be leadership in your own household or, or whatever. Um, Hebrews 13, 17, obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be, pro would be unprofitable to you. Folks, that's what, what leaders do. We watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Buddy, this, if this scripture does not bring the fear of God and the conviction of God, I don't know what. That one was for me. We need to watch over people like, uh, like a mother watches over they're, they're, they're youngins. And you see it all through nature. You always hear about stuff like bears. Don't ever get between a mama bear and their cubs and be messing with them because you are going to be in a world of you know what. We need to watch over. Parents, they're always, they've always got that antenna, and especially the mothers. Like, where'd that Darren go? You know, or where... Where, where's, where, where's, like that, that's like when they left me on a vacation, going to New Mexico with a car load of kids, packed in, in all the junk on top, and they left me in a bath, you know, I went to the bathroom in a little service station, they left me, off they go, down the road they went, probably three or four miles, and finally mom where, where's David? And looking around. And my brothers, they thought it was hilarious. So they do a back turn. And back they go. And here I am standing out in the corner crying. But a mother has always got that antenna. They always know they're watching. Where is that person? We have to be that way with each other. Folks, we're living in la-la land. We're living in la-la land. And we're unalert. But man, the, the scriptures... They warn about being, uh, being distracted and in dissipation um, and that sort of thing. So we have to be watchful leaders. Uh, Paul talked about, I think it was to the Galatians, he said, My children, whom I am in labor until Christ is formed in you. I've never been in labor and probably never will be, but... If you, if you are a leader, that's my goal as a pastor, that my, I'm in labor until Christ is formed in you. That's, 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 that's the desire. 
And we have to be watchful like that. And we have to always be watching. Always be watching. Because God is always watching. God, God doesn't take coffee breaks. Now, he doesn't inform me what he does. But he's so faithful that he cannot deny himself. And if he said it, he has to do it. And we can count. He's committed himself. And folks, we have to have that same commitment within us. So, um, so we have to be watching. Now, God is watching over his word to perform it at all times. And we have to watch over, um, not only be looking for what God has and what God wants to do, and, not, and watching over each other, we have to watch over ourselves. I, I quoted this scripture, um, I think last week, where uh, about um, watching over your heart with all diligence, because from it flow the springs of life. Now, that was during the dissipation. We have to watch. We have to watch over our mouths that can cause so much trouble. And so we have to watch over those things. But the big key... And this is what I'm going to be ending with here. Um, is watching needs to be spirit empowered, which means God empowered. Our watching, we can't, let's face it, folks, it's not in us. It is not in us, in our nature, to keep on the alert. We're too busy sleeping. Like, like Jesus said to Peter, you couldn't even keep watch for an hour. Folks, I'm sorry, I can't keep watch for a minute. But God can do that. God can empower us to do this. Uh, uh, one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 121, verse, um, I'm sorry, 127 and verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. And unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen keep awake in vain. Folks, God is watching, and we, can, we have to be that same way. But unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen keep awake in vain. You know, it's not a matter of saying, well, preacher, I guess I can stay up a little longer and maybe pray for a few more minutes or maybe, maybe try to get off my duff I think I can say that word, can I? Get off my duff and get with the program a little bit. But we have to, God has to do it. So we are working in partnership with, Lord, with, with the Lord. It's not a matter of you of just kind of getting with it a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's, a, it's, it's making sure it's God doing it. It's, doing, it's God doing it. We are, and that's why the watching has to be done with praying. We don't say, oh, all right, I better start looking at the clouds. Now Jesus might be coming back. No, it's watching and praying. You know, watching for God's will and saying, I want to do that, Lord. Okay, now get this one. Isaiah 62, verse 6 and 7. Isaiah, the whole chapter of Isaiah 62 you talk about some beautiful stuff. In fact, from Isaiah chapter 40 to the end is so magnificent in its beauty about the Lord Jesus and about his, his people. Um, and this is 6 and 7 of Isaiah 62. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen. All day and all night, they will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves and give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Man, that's the ticket right there. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen. Folks, I claim that one. I claim it. I want to be a watchman on those walls. And, but look at what he says. I have appointed. I have appointed. That's one of the wonderful things I love about the Methodist church 
is that we are appointed. We are sent. Now, um, granted, there's the human stuff of, well, how do you really know that person should have been there or whatever? All I know is that God has appointed me. And wherever I am, he has appointed me. And, he, and God says, I've appointed watchmen on the wall. How about you? How about you? I love talking like the, the people. How about you? You there sitting on the, eating that bowl of, um, of Cheerios. Cheerios. I was going to say Tutti Frutti. <laughs> you better not be eating Tutti Frutti ice cream this early. Only Darren does that. But yeah, you sitting there eating those Cheerios. How about getting up on that wall and has God appointed you? That's the thing. And it's, you know, you might be appointed to, um, to whatever. Um, you know, you might be appointed to run the sound equipment and the video equipment. But you need to know where God has placed you. And, but now check out what we do. Before you think, man, I'm a watchman. Look at me. I get to wear a badge and everything. It's you got to do something here. And look what they get to do. All day and all night, they will never keep silent. Man, where's your little coffee break? Oh, wait a minute, I get all night and all day? Never keeping silent. Man, I love it. I love what Jeremiah said. He said, if I don't speak, your word in me is like a fire shut up in my bones. Man, that's, that's, that's what it is. You get God inside you, it's going to come out. Whether you're a spokesman or whether you're a worker, whatever it is. And then check it out. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves. That's one of the big things we love to do in our denomination. We're always work, we always are concerned. Are you taking care of yourself, brother or sister? You know, how are you, how are you doing Sabbath? And, that, and I don't want to get... You know, I, I got to be careful here. But we worry too much about ourselves. Are you resting enough? You look a little, a little, a little peaked. Your jowls are shagging a little bit. Your crow's feet. Are you taking care of yourself, dear one? Take no rest for yourself, God says. And give him no rest. Man, don't you want to be a pest? to God. All you, you parents out there, how about it if your kids started pastoring you? Can I please clean the garage today? Can I get out and mow the yard? Can I do this? Can I do that? That's what God wants to hear from us. He wants those watchmen that are never going to keep silent day and night. And I love the term, you who remind the Lord. So we remind him. Now, that doesn't mean God's forgetful, but he likes to hear his will being, being um, promoted. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. That's why that, that, that's encompassed in the Lord's prayer. So we, if we're a reminder of the Lord, don't take any rest for yourself. Now, don't get on and start complaining and say, well, that preacher, the next thing you know, uh, we're going to be overdoing it ourselves and we're going to have to, you know, take an extra bottle of Geritol with all your, your, your iron poor blood. And the next thing you know, we're going to be doing one of them all night of prayers. So get over it. Take no rest for yourselves. You need a little balance in your life. And that's this one. And give him no rest. Man, that's what God wants. God wants us to be cheering him on and say, come on, Lord. Let's, let's, let's see your will done. Your will done. Give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And you can claim that as the church. And we'll see it in, our, in, in natural Jerusalem, but you'll see it in the heavenly Jerusalem. Man, it's going to be a praise in the earth. We're not going to be just trotted on like the church is trotted on now and looked down upon. So you're a, you're a, a watchman of the wall. So look at the, the attributes. The attribute. And, and remember, it's God that does this. He does the appointing and he does the empowering. And we can, we can um, get in, in the spirit of God. 
like the scripture I read earlier about, pray at all times in the Holy Spirit and letting him pray through you. All right, for the final one, it's, and it's guarding, guarding the treasure that's within us. And this comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. Paul has said something to Timothy in his first letter, in 1 Timothy, about, about Timothy. Oh, Timothy. He, he said, guard, guard the gift that's within you. And then in this, um, his last letter, Paul writes, he said, guard through the Holy Spirit who indwells, who dwells in us the treasure which has been entrusted to you. Um, in the... Uh, in another translation, it says, guard the deposit which has been entrusted to you. God has placed something in you. And don't tell me he hasn't. I don't care how much you run, how much you hide, how much you deny. The Bible says that, that he, has, he has given you a gift to, to each one of us. So what are you going to do with it? There's a deposit that's made. Well, I'm going to give this, this special calling, and only you can do it, so I'm going to drop that thing right in your heart. But he says, guard, watch it, keep watch over it, and he says, through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So that's how we watch, and we watch over ourselves. Folks, don't let God's treasure go to waste. Don't waste the, 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 the gift that he's placed it, placed with it. <laughs> he's placed it. That's a nice word. But he's, he's placed something, a treasure. Guard the treasure which has been entrusted to us. Folks, you might have the one word that can reach one person to keep them out of eternity of crying and shame and darkness and torture. You are the one that's got the treasure. You have the key that can unlock someone's heart. Folks, I know we've wasted a lot of years. I've wasted so much. But that's what, in my heart, I want, I want to be effective. And I, I don't want to waste anymore. I want to be able to, to, to give it all. And I need to guard, guard through the Holy Spirit. Hey, man, this is good stuff. I know I say that a lot, but this is good. This is God's word for the people of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word, Lord, that burns within our hearts. Father, may we be like a big tub of dry kindling wood that your light of your word can spark us and turn into a raging fire of people doing your will. Lord, we, are, we, we thank you for your word. We ask that you bless it for anybody that hears this and wherever your word goes, Lord. And we thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, folks. Praise the Lord. Um, for our final hymn, Near the Cross. I believe this is uh, another one of the, the uh, Fanny Crosby hymns. <coughs>
beyond the rim. Amen. Near the cross, a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. There you folks give it all to him near the cross near the cross be my glory till my ransom soul shall find rest beyond the Before me, help me walk from day to day with its shadows over me. In the cross, in the cross, be. May it never be that I should glory save in the cross of Christ through whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. May we be like the almond branch, Lord. May your blossoms that come forth from your people as, they, as the world looks through the darkness, may we bear fruit and signal the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Father, we thank you for your great and marvelous and holy word. Lord, plant it deep within us, Lord, that it could come forth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.